This video is to help you with the sewing up and finishing of Father Christmas, who um, I've got here. I've already gone ahead and worked his hair and beard, but I'm going to be doing all the rest of the sewing up and the finishing for you to see. So um, follow your pattern, obviously. And on this design, you're going to be using a um, skin tone built into a hair color and a beard. So actually what you make does actually have all the color changing of the hair and beard color in it. So you're left with quite a small patch of the skin tone for the eyes and then the two ears either side when working your loop stitches to put the hair on there's a lot of varying lengths of stitches in this one and it just gives it a bit more of a real shape so you're actually working a short length right the way around the hairline then filling it in with a slightly longer one then you're doing a short length across that mustache line because it does actually have a little mouth in there as well color changed in and then you work longer ones to fill in the rest of the beard afterwards now, when it comes to doing the eyes, I've just sewn two eyes on in the usual way using um, black uh, eye thread. So, um, and then the last thing to add will be the nose. Now, I'm going to put that in because um, I think I'm going to get probably quite carried away and I'll often forget the nose if I do that last. So, all I'm going to do to add the nose on is take a length of the colour that you've used for the skin tone and then just do a few wraps of yarn across a few stitches just in the line above the colour change round between the beard colour and the skin tone so I'm going to do another few wraps there and then it's on to assembling the rest of his limbs so he has been designed very much with the idea that he's got thermals underneath and um, this is the kind of father Christmas that I don't think lives in a, a grotto um, surrounded by elves that keep it nice and warm all the time I think this is a father Christmas that walks out of the woods uh, very much on his own um, so he, he's got thermals built in um, underneath. So he his body you're actually making in the chestnut colour and the cocoa colour. You've actually then got his mittens in the fudge built into that as a colour change. So all I've done there is sew in those ends and snip off those rounds. And I've done that on both sides of the gloves. Now when it comes to stuffing, um, just to show you a little bit of that, put in in exactly the same way, a little bit down into the bottom only. It's not that the um, arms are stuffed. So just put a little bit of stuffing in and use the heel end of your hook to push that down so it sits into the bottom. You can use your hook both ways around as I am doing now to actually pull that stu stuffing through as well as pushing it down with the heel. And what I always do when I'm stuffing two parts like hands is go back to the other one um, before I conclude that I've got enough. Make sure that it feels the same as the other ones. That they feel nice and balanced with the amount of stuffing that they've got in. Now, when it comes to sewing on the arms, the thumbs need to be forwards. So you just need to make sure that when you've got your two arms, you've got your thumbs facing forwards like that. Sew the tops flat with those thumbs facing forward. And this would always be the same for any of the dolls. So uh, because this one's got built in gloves, it's actually the basic hand um, that's done. And then you add the thumb in on top. But it would be the same if you're doing the advanced hand where it's got all the little fingers in as well, is to make sure that your thumbs are facing forward. So what I'm then going to do is line that into the colour change line. And actually sew across there on one side. Flip it over and sew the other side too. Now I didn't quite have enough length there, so do make sure you leave yourself a long length on each piece as you make it. It'll just make it a little bit easier that you won't have to rejoin any yarn later on in order to sew those pieces into position. So there's that one in. So again, with my thumb facing forwards, line that up onto that line. And then over sew one side into that colour change line. Flip it over and do the same thing on the underside so it's nice and strong. So 
So next, let's sew his legs into position. And his boots are removable, so you make his boots separately. Um, unlike the gloves, you make his boots separately. So he has got the end of his long johns and then um, his feet at the bottom of these. So when you've got the feet, you've obviously got the foot forward. So in terms of their shaping, you've got that shaping that comes out on the front. So you're going to be sewing the tops of the legs flat like that before you sew them into position. Okay, so let's just close those off so that they're flat. That will make it a little bit easier to sew into place. And then position the legs. Um, because often these dolls are displayed, if you've not got a doll stand, you're going to be displaying it sitting down. So we want to make sure that we've got the legs at the right angle to make it nice and easy for him to sit down, especially when it is in this bigger size. So what you're going to do is draw a line that comes down the centre of the head like that, down the centre of the body and divides the bottom of the body into thirds. So the line would be there. So I'm going to then sew the legs onto the two thirds lines like that. And that means that the legs will splay forwards nicely um, when you are sitting your doll down. So it's nicely balanced. It will balance out the tummy and it will balance out the head so that it can sit up really nicely, whether you're going to put it on a mantelpiece, on a chair, on a shelf, um, whether it's going to sit on a bed, um, wherever Father Christmas is going to end up for you or any of the other dolls for that matter. So once you've sewn one side, so the other side, again, I've got a slightly short length on this, um, so probably leave yourself a little bit more. Like that, and then secure it in and around a stitch. I'm just sewing with the heel end of the needle, as you can see there, because uh, I'd run out of yarn. So then do exactly the same thing on the other side. So get your central line in again and sew the legs onto the line that creates the thirds. So once he is complete and his limbs are in position, it's time to move on to working on his coat. And the way you're going to make the coat is you crochet and the main body of the coat in one piece. And then the hood is actually made separately and then you sew it on. So when you're following the pattern, you'll find that you've got a section that's left without loop stitches on like that. So you're going to work those loop stitches right the way around the edge of most of the hood. And this section that doesn't have the loop stitches on, all you're going to do is sew it on to the back of the coat. So you just need to pop it into place like that and then sew between the front and the back of the, well, the, the back of the coat and the front of the hood like that. And you'll find that that's then not visible on the other side. It's a really neat finish. Especially go through both sides of the stitches. Then once you've done that and sewn through both sides right the way along in order to join that hood on, what I will then do is actually sew in these ends on either side. So where you've got the ends like that, and that was to make sure that your loop stitches were all the same side facing. So it did create quite a few ends when adding on the trim onto the hood. I'll, I'd thread up those in one go like that. So I've got all my ends and come through to neaten those off. Now, what I haven't actually mentioned properly to this point is the fact that I'm working in our Aran weight of yarn here, um, which is the large size. The kit actually is available in both double knit and Aran. So the, the double knit, which would be our more standard size, that's half the thickness of this. This is the Aran yarn, um, the large Father Christmas that scales it up to this big. And what I've used here is the green for the body of the coat and then the, the silver festive yarn, so the sparkly silver yarn to go around the edge on this one. So in the same way that I did with that, I'm just going to come through and secure off all of those ends in one go. Because there were quite a few having broken that yarn to get the loop stitches on the right side to do the trim on the hood because you were working in rows rather than rounds. So let's just finish that off. Then it comes to the main coat. So you've got the hood attached now and 
you actually work this piece separately. So this was a piece that you worked as rows as well. And all I'm going to do to fix that into place is I've tacked it at the top. So get your hood on first so that you can see clearly where the back is and then where the front is of your coat like that. Fold it nice and flat because you've got that lovely extreme um, decreasing. So we actually start from the bottom up on this one. So position it like that and then you can tack that into place all the way down the front before you then sew the pockets on. So once you've sewn that all the way down the front of there, the last thing with the coat is to add the pockets. So what you've got with your pockets is two little squares that in a similar way actually to the hood, haven't got loop stitches on the back. Now what I'm going to do is use my length, let me see what my longest length of green is there. I might not quite have enough yarn there inside the pocket, so I might rejoin the yarn just to show you that. So you obviously can choose to sew in all of those ends properly on the inside. I'm just going to tuck them in for now. If you choose to sew them in properly, it might be a nice idea because you can always obviously add little sweets into the pockets um, of your Father Christmas or little presents should you wish to. So with the pocket, position it like that, about three rows from the bottom and about three stitches in from the edge. And then sew into position on that side and then across onto this one. and then sew into position on that side with the loop stitches. And then what you need to do, and what if it was one like that where it was contrasting, I would fasten that off onto the inside. Then just to make that pocket really neat, take a length of the green, not quite that long, a length of the green, and so round the edge of the pocket as well. So that's very firmly into position. So like that, and then sew round the edge of the pocket between the fabric of the coat and where it folds flat as a line. And then repeat the same thing on the other side to put the second pocket into position. Then next, once you've finished that, is how to get your father Christmas dressed. And this is something that I think a lot of people struggle with with the dolls because the head is so big that there is really only one way in to the outfits. And that goes for whether it be a top, whether it be trousers. You have to always put them in with their body, with their feet going in through the neckline first. So open up the neckline and push his legs in like that. Then obviously the biggest, widest part of that body other than the head is gonna be the tummy. So you might just have to squish the tummy down a little bit as it goes in through that headline, like that. There we go, so that's on and in position. And then all you need to do is get those arms through and into those sleeves. So what you need to do, push the mitten in through the sleeve and then push it down the length until you can get it from the other side and then gently pull it out. I've got a few more ends to sew in there still. And the same thing on the other side, pop that in through the shoulder point, push that down the length of the sleeve until you can pull that out the other side. And so Father Christmas has his jacket on. Then time for the final finishing touches. Um, and the lovely thing about the hood is the hood does come up over the top of that so that you can have that gorgeous hood up if you wish. But he does need a crown of holly. So what you're going to do to do the crown of holly is I would recommend doing your chain first. So you can do your long chain to put around a bit like a headband and then use that as your guide to sew the holly into place. So have your chain around the head first and then you can just sew your holly on all the way around where you want to position it. And then the last thing to show you is the boots. So there's a little bit of finishing left on the boots to do. And that will be because what you're going to do to um, put in a line between the leather effectively and the sole is to do a slip stitch around that colour change line. And then when it comes to doing your laces, we're going to chain the laces as well. So chain that loop, pop that around the head like that. So you've got a nice guideline for sewing your holly into position and then take each individual piece of holly
And what I tend to find easier is I would take my end down to one end like that. So take my end that was on the tip down to one end. I might even re-thread both at that point so that you've got two ends in together. So you won't have to sew those on separately. So bring your two ends to one point like that. Position that holly as your starting point on the there and sew through the band and through the head and hair. Um, and that way they're nicely firmly attached. Um, it's not that that's gonna be removable at all. That's sewn into position exactly where you want it to be. And just sew using two ends at once right the way through the head. So all you're going to do to add the final touches to the boots will be to do a slip stitch traverse line between the colour change, so between the cocoa and the fudge. So using the cocoa, put your hook into position and all you're going to do is put your hook in and around the next stitch along and slip stitch around that stitch. And you go right the way around that colour change line between the two and that just gives a lovely little detail to the sole. And you get right the way back round, just slip stitch into the first one to neaten that off. Then you can snip and sew in those two ends. And the last little bit of detail will be to add the laces. And I find it easier to add the laces once I've actually got the boot onto the foot because you're gonna see the shape of that boot a little bit more. So add the, la add the boot onto the foot like that. Make sure you've got that in the right position. And then you can obviously sew your ends straight into the foot if, like me, you don't wish your Father Christmas to ever uh, lose his shoes. Um, I'm going to sew them straight in because I don't intend for him to have a different costume. But obviously you can sew your ends in um, directly into that section as you would normally do. And then his shoes will be fully removable in the same way. Then to add your laces, all we're going to do is a series of chains in order to draw a little shape, um, a little crisscross shape on the boot. So marry the two up so that we're looking as symmetrical as possible. Chain. Go across on that same round. Cross, use, your, use the stitches as a grid to help you. And then the final one is to head back to where we came from and where we started, like that. And I've got them on the foot so that it's facing me. Do it whichever way is easiest for you. If you're gonna add them on before it's attached to the foot, you can even have um, them the other way around. So it doesn't matter whether you move right to left, left to right, just make sure that you're um, following that little crisscross pattern. So go across first, then diagonal, across again, and then diagonally up to where you started. And you'll create that lovely little shape that looks like tied laces on a boot. So that is our Father Christmas complete. So the last thing that I've got to go and do now is add all of my extra hollies on around that wreath and then my Father Christmas doll is complete, ready to go out on display this Christmas. <laughs> 